Hi everyone, uh, my name is Carrie Jansen. I'm an MD PhD student at Emory University in Atlanta. I'm going to talk to you about T cell infiltration into renal tumors. Arid T cell infiltration has been investigated as an indicator of patient outcomes in many cancer types, and we study that in human renal tumors. To do this, we obtain intraoperative tumor samples and examine immune infiltration into these tumors. When we look at CD8 T cells in these tumors, we observe a remarkably large variation in CD8 T cell infiltration. And when we stratify patients in, into those with high CD8 infiltration and those with low CD8 infiltration, we find that patients with poor CD8 infiltration progress much more quickly than those that have a strong T cell response. But when we examine a number of other characteristics of these patients and their disease, we find that a patient's CD8 T cell response does not correlate with tumor size, disease stage, histologic subtype, or with patient age, sex, or race. Um, and so this really prompted the question of what accounts for the variation that we see in the T cell response and what mechanisms may maintain this response. So to answer this question, we must build upon the work of others in the field who have defined the stem-like model of the T cell response in numerous mouse models. In this model, there's a stem-like CD8 T cell, which is defined by high expression of CD28 and the transcription factor TCF1 and low expression of checkpoint and effector molecules. This stem-like CD8 T cell can both self-renew and differentiate into terminally differentiated cells, which lack expression of that transcription factor TCF1 and have high expression of checkpoint and effector molecules like granzymes and perforin. So when we look in our human cancer patients, we can indeed find these stem-like and terminally differentiated CD8 T cells, that we see the PD1 high TIM3 po positive terminally differentiated cells in red, and the TIM3 negative CD28 positive stem like CD8 T cells in green. Importantly, when we sort these two cell populations out and stimulate them in vitro, we can see that while terminally differentiated cells are unable to proliferate, the stem like CD8 T cells undergo many rapid rounds of division, and as these stem like cells divide, there's an increase in the expression of TIM3 and other checkpoint molecules, suggesting a lineage relationship. And so given that relationship, and we expected there might also be a relationship between the amount of total T-cell infiltration into the tumor and the amount of stem-like CD8 T-cells in the tumor, and indeed there is. Put differently, this means that the loss or absence of the stem-like cell population correlates with the loss of the total T-cell population, T-cell response. As when we lose the stem-like CD8 T cells, we lose the production of new terminally differentiated CD8 T cells, and we lose the anti-tumor T cell response. So the question then really becomes, what maintains the stem-like CD8 T cell population? To begin answering this question, we also wondered where these cell populations were located within the tumor, and if they may be associated with additional cell types. So using immunofluorescence, we were able to observe dense aggregations of immune cells within the tumor. And what we noticed was that TCF1 positive stem-like cells reside in close proximity with densely clustered antigen presenting cells, whereas terminally differentiated cells are more dispersed throughout the tumor. We can also quantify this observation by creating a sort of immuno map of the tumor, where we have a contour in gray of the antigen presenting cell density overlaid with the XY location of the stem-like and CD8 T cells in green and the terminally differentiated CD8 T cells in red, again noticing how these stem-like CD8 T cells really seem to reside within a high antigen presenting density niche in the tumor. And so then if we scale this up um, to look at the antigen presenting cell density across a larger cohort of patient tumors, we can see that patients without progressive disease have a significantly higher proportion of their tumor tissue with high antigen presenting cell density, whereas patients with progressive disease lack this same level of antigen presenting cell density in the tumor. Similarly, if we stratify patients with antigen presenting cell dense or sparse tumors, we find that the patients with antigen presenting dense tumors have significantly improved progression free survival. But simply, this suggests that the loss or absence of antigen presenting zones in tumors occurs during tumor escape and that these antigen-presenting niches are critical for maintaining the anti-tumor T-cell response, which helps control disease and promote patient survival. So to summarize the model that we're proposing is that in tumors with a productive immune response, there are areas of high antigen-presenting cell density, which serve as homes for the stem-like CD8 T-cells that give rise to new terminally differentiated cells and sustain the anti-tumor T-cell response. Conversely, when these antigen-presenting cell-dense regions are lost, the stem-like T-cell population in the tumor is lost, and the anti-tumor T-cell response fails. 
So with that, I'd like to thank my lab, um, our good collaborators, all the patients and their families who contribute their samples. Thank you.